Good afternoon, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us today to learn how you can supercharge your meet with the Athletic Suite. My name is Ben Thomas, and I'm the director of live results at Athletic, as well as the creator of Athletic Live. And joining me today is Kim Modelewski, Athletic's event partnership director. We are thrilled to now be, <coughs> excuse me, the exclusive technology partner for the US TFCCCA, and we're thankful for the opportunity to present to you today. Over the next half hour to 45 minutes, we'll look at the technology that Athletic can bring to your programs and how it can make a positive impact on your meets. Everything we talk about can be done by a coach who's timing their own meet or by a timing company you've hired. We'll give an overview of the three main parts of the Athletic Suite. And while all these features are most powerful when used together, it is possible to use each item a la carte based on what makes the most sense for your program. Kim will discuss the athletic net side of things, including real-time performance list updates, how easy it is to register on athletic, and our payout and invoicing system. Then I'll give a brief demo of RunMeet, our cloud-based meet management system, and go over a few features of Athletic Live, such as how real-time performances show up on live scoreboards, uh, race and field videos, and our field results, physical scoreboard, and awards management companion apps. We're going to keep it pretty high level, as we could easily do a session on each of these topics. Um, but we'll be happy to take some questions if there's any time at the end. And if you'd like to discuss any of these features in depth, please don't hesitate to come talk to us after. And with that, I will go ahead and hand it over to you, Kim. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for taking the time to visit with us today. I'm going to just pull up my presentation. Give me a moment, please. So as high school coaches, I'm sure there are a number of you that are already familiar with athletic.net, if nothing else, knowing that it is an excellent uh, recruiting tool for college coaches. And that is, I think, how the college familiarity, familiarity with athletic.net has gotten started. But let's move on to how athletic.net and the athletic suite can work for you all. So imagine using one platform, one source, and one login for the majority of your digital event needs. What would that look like for you? So when we talk about an event management process, there are these key components to help you and assist you with your event management. Starting with entry collection and a smooth entry process that pulls seeds from the most robust database available. Fee collection funneled straight from your team's bank account or into your team's bank account with the frequency in which you choose. Meet in a meet invitation and email system that allows you to communicate through the same platform with all of your teams and individuals attending your meet. Entry management options for your invitationals that includes an accept reject process as well as notifications that are instantaneously sent when you make those decisions. Built in meet management software, which would be athletic run meet that allows you to bypass expensive meet management software programs and dovetails intuitively with the meet entries that you have already collected. A live results platform, which is athletic live that captures every event the second that it happens offers race videos if you so choose, field event videos, and allows spectators from anywhere to witness your event if they're not available or able to be physically in your facility. A simple and straightforward up results upload system in the event that you don't live, use our live results program. The very best qualifier advancement system available for your championship meet series and often undiscussed, but in my opinion, the most important element that we offer you as a company is an excellent support staff that is waiting to help you with any questions that you might use or might have about using our process. So let's talk a bit, even though it was the last thing that I mentioned, let's talk a little bit about how support works with athletic.net. Not only do we offer a direct support site, which is support at athletic.net, we also offer a wealth of uh, documents in our help document library that really are a guide and a tutorial for you to help yourself so that you aren't waiting for a response from support staff. In the getting started mode, we have quite a few different tutorials that offer a quick start guide for new coaches. So if you're brand new to athletic.net, I would encourage you to start with this particular slide 
and really familiarize yourself with all the different elements that we have available for you immediately to get yourself started with athletic.net. So we, like I said, the quick, the quick start guide for new coaches is the excellent place for you to start. So when we take a look at a meet, well, actually what I'd like to do is back up just a smidge and bear with me because my screen has become tiny. There we go, should be a little better. This is an example of a high school team homepage. And I'm actually showing you my team home school. This is where my kids went to school in Lake Oswego. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see all of the coaches that are listed here that have access to this particular page. If you want to invite a new coach to your page, you have that option by simply clicking invite another coach. If you would like to generate the option for yourself to be added for, to a team page, there will be a button alternatively that will say request access to this page. Looking at a demo meet, I wanted to talk to you about a few different elements of the process of setting up and facilitating your meet on athletic.net and specifically facilitating entries. One of the things that's really nice about setting up a meet on athletic.net is that when you do so and when you collect entries, we have an invite participants process, and this is what we were talking about a bit earlier, where you can send an invitation directly to a coach to invite them to come and participate in your meet. You also have the option in the settings tab to consider your meet invitation only so, so that only your invitations that have been sent out are available to any coach that's interested. We also have a very robust, robust email program that uh, is built within. So once all of those different teams or unattached athletes are listed on your participants tab, they are now your captive audience and you can communicate all of your meet information and any other instructions that you'd like to send to them, including attachments, by using this email program that functions very much like a Word document. So we hope that it feels familiar to you if you choose to use it. When you are in the process of setting up your meet, we have uh, a high school, this, this one is currently set up for college, but if I wanted to switch this meet template to high school, we have the option of choosing a standard US, a, USA high school template, and this should bring in the standard measures and weights for all of your field events as well. So I just wanted you to know that we have that option. Moving on to the meet information tab, that is the basic tab full of all kinds of information about your meet, including location and any entry beginning and deadline timeframes that you would like to apply to the entry process. Of course, divisions are fairly standard. I mean, in the additional meet options tab, I wanted to just show you a few details that are available. Again, the invitation only option, if you'd like to lock a meet down to just those that you invite, you also have the ability to set the number of events or the maximum number of events per athlete. Uh, of course, there are all kinds of different seed options. One thing that you might find interesting is that you have the option, uh, you can allow someone to add an override, but you can also lock, lock out the option for someone to add an override if you would just like to pull in results from the athletic.net ecosystem. You also can set the date range if you would like for the marks that you're willing to accept for your meet. And then although we don't have anything pre-configured for you to take a peek at here, I did wanna mention our fee collection system if you are perhaps uh, offering an invitational where you are charging per entry, then you have the option to do that through athletic.net. We use a third, third party fee collection site called Stripe, very similar to PayPal. If you set up Stripe, you would then link your bank account directly to the Stripe system. And then as you're collecting entry fees for your invitational or for any products, perhaps t-shirts or meal tickets or parking passes or uh, stadium event entry, all of these things can be collected through athletic.net and then those funds would be uh, deposited into your Stripe account and then into your bank account as regularly as you choose. So it could be daily, weekly, monthly. It could be the end of the year if you have a certain bookkeeping cycle. So once you set up that Stripe connection, it's a one-time deal and then that is linked to your account as long as you would like. So just wanted you to know about some of those options. Yes? Yes, once you link that Stripe account to your Meet, you would then have the option to go into what we call your Stripe dashboard, and by Meet, you can see every line item payment. So you could share that with your bookkeeper. We also have the ability to print off individual invoices if you prefer that method. So there are a couple of different views of that. It's an excellent question, thank you. Okay, and really lastly on the uh, actual 
setup tab, I just wanted to point out that we have a very, very robust list of events. I think you'll find everything that you would be looking for in a high school event. This one, of course, is set up for college, but you can, of course, tag events per division as well. So let's talk a bit about the entry management process, since I mentioned that just briefly in my intro. Uh, this is our entries tab, and if you consider the athletic suite a bit of a continuum as you run across these tabs, once you've collected your entries, you would then be rolling into using, potentially using our meet management software, RunMeet, and then if you had any kind of a qualifier advancement process, you could roll into that as well. But let's talk a bit about entry management. Say you were uh, hosting an invitational for your school, and whether or not it was a true invitational and you only sent out invites or it was at large, perhaps you only wanted to, uh, to perhaps you were limiting entries to 50 per event. So you, you certainly have a setting where you could either limit that to just simply 50 collected entries, or you could use our accept reject process to select the top 50 entries of the, of the ones that were submitted. So if we pick on the 60 meter dash here, one of, what, in my opinion, one of the neatest features about athletic.net is that when you go in and choose to actually accept an entry, you can, if you would like, and I'll use one that actually hasn't been established, as you're accepting your entry, if you pre-configure a notification, which is essentially an email, you have the option of not only accepting, but you can accept and send a notification to the person who submitted that entry instantaneously. So if you pre-configure that email before you go through your accept reject process, with one click, you are notifying that coach that their athlete's entries have been accepted. Yes? So does it send it after every individual that you accept, or will there be sort of this accumulated list of all your acceptances? Um, it is, is it depends. If you're going through and doing it really quickly, then what it would do is send a coach an email every X number of minutes, and I've forgotten how frequently it is. I think it's within the, the 10 to 20 minute range, and then it would give them a list. And then if you took a pause, a coffee break, you came back to it next day, then they would get a separate email for your, your next batch. Yes? Um, you have to pre-configure your notifications in order for them to kick in and for, in order for you to see that drop-down option. But the pre-configuration process is a one-time setup per status. Great questions. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then lastly, I wanted to just show you a bit about the actual entry submission process. When a coach goes to submit entries, it is... Uh, there are two different options. First of all, what's really exciting is that you, more than one coach can submit entries for a team. So if your coach has access to athletic.net, if you have 10 coaches with access, they have the option to submit entries for their subset of athletes that they train. You can submit entries either by individual event. So in this case, if I clicked on a 60 meter dash, you would see every male on their team and they could be selected from alphabetically that way. Or if you would like to offer the coach the option to submit by name, then you would just simply click on an athlete's name, and then you would see every event available to them, and it would limit them to whatever pre-configured maximum per athlete you have already determined in your meet settings. And I wanted to show you this view in particular because if you were allowing overrides, then it would give the option to explain why they submitted that override. So if a coach submitted uh, an override and they wanted to explain either the meet, add a URL, there's room for that that you can pre-configure. And then when we go back to that entries tab that we were just talking about, you can see those notes in a column that's viewable only to you. Remember, this is the backside view here. But what that does is eliminate the need for those coaches to send you copious emails justifying their override. They can add it to the system. And then you have a catalog of it. So once you've collected meet your, all of your entries, we would then, in this continuum, make our way into run meet. I'll skip that piece for now because Ben is going to do a good job describing that. Run meet then dovetails into athletic live. Yes? So on seeds, if they've got a mark in athletic.net, say the first guy, 6.7, mm -hmm. um, yes. and there's an override type in of, say, 6.71, mm -hmm. or whatever it's going to be, it'll automatically pick the faster one. Uh, it, it would. And mark, flag it. Like, yeah, it, it would flag it that it's there, and then you as the host can determine. If overrides are allowed, it would, it would allow that override to so be the mark. I get to choose which one. Right. So, for example, in this column, say they put in a 669. You would see the 67 here, the 669 here, and then whatever you choose to verify is the one that's carried into your entries download. Yeah, because I'd be more worried about not 669 being the one they type in, but 
five, six, nine. Sure. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yes, that would be carried into the final column, but you as the host have the option to say, nope, that's not the case. I know what the true one is, and they don't have the option to override your override because you are the host. So it does lock it now. And that's a very good question. And I just got through the Junior Olympic Series, so very familiar with that process. <laughs> And uh, by the way, this particular entry management system is used by Nike Indoor Nationals, Nike Outdoor Nationals, New Balance Series. Um, it's really widely used for very large meets. Yeah, very, very large meets across the country. So it's a very well vetted, very thorough process. And I want to save a little time for Ben, so I'll rush through the rest of this. But I wanted to let you know that if you choose to lose, use something like Run Meet, something like Athletic Live, then all of those meet results are auto-imported into athletic.net at the conclusion of the meet. But if you don't choose to do that, then we do have the option, uh, a very easy option for you to simply upload results from the meet management software that you may have chosen to use. But if you use something like Athletic Live, then Ben will explain this amazing process of real-time results that will be available through Athletic Live. And then lastly, because I think it is very important, uh, I was going to show you, I have to remember which slide I had this on, here we go. This is our championship qualifier series, and the reason that I'm showing you Illinois High, School, Illinois High School is that this is one of the largest series that we deal with in the United States. And Illinois runs a championship series at the end of their season uh, that includes 39 sectionals that lead to, or 39 regionals that leads to 13 sectionals that leads to three state meets. And my point being is that this very long list of events, then these, all of these meets are part of that state series. Our qualifier advancement system will allow the user of that particular system to add the advancement formula from one tier to the next. And then the uh, source meets would be, in this case, a regional meet. We would add the formula to the destination meet, which would be the sectional meet. And then we would do the same moving section to state. So it's a very thorough process if all of those meets are listed with their results in athletic.net. Um, it's a system that has been used very successfully by Illinois as example. And then lastly, I wanted to just uh, show you a, a little bit about rankings. And if we pop into the high school rankings in the United States, we have a dedicated page. Let's see. I'm going to just pop into high school here. So we have a specific subsection for every single state in the nation. And if I pop really quickly into Oregon, you can see that it breaks it down by division. And then we can you know, just simply look at the Oregon rankings all together. And then we also have the option through various break, breakdowns. You can break it down by division. You can break it down by district. So the rankings are as wide or as narrow as you choose to make them based on our filters. And when you're using something like Athletic Live, as soon as those results are posted to the meet management software, those rankings are adjusted live as well. Well, that really concludes my portion of the meet. I just wanted to make sure that you're aware really quickly of the meet. I feel like I'm going to meet today, but of the presentation. <laughs> um, we do have something called site supporter access. So some of the features that I've shown you today are based on a site supporter subscription. The majority of the features I showed you today are, the, are part of our free access on athletic.net. So if you want to know a little bit more about the levels of access on athletic.net, again, the majority of the features are free, as you can see. You can certainly run a meet through athletic.net without uh, subscribing to the site supporter feature. But uh, there is quite a bit of information in our help documents about the additional features that are available to you as a site supporter. Are you still able, is there a way to still upload results? So Absolutely. That part of yes. Those can be a part of those rankings? Yes, you still can. So if, if it's a situation where perhaps your state likes, your state association is requiring a different system, you can still upload your results to athletic.net. CSE file is usually the best choice. And I'm going to hand this off to you. Thank you, Kim. There you go. All right. Actually, I'll point out, I, I get emails that will say uh, athletic.net has uploaded results to meets. I never sent them in. I don't know if they were sent in by someone else, but I mean, it's pretty regular. So the database is pretty robust. I mean, it's very robust. I've had yeah. to add a meet every so often, mm -hmm. a JV meet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have a we have a robust staff that makes sure that our results are as complete as possible. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Kim. Sure. And hello again, everyone. Uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about RunMeet, which is our cloud-based meat management system. And this is a test meet that contains real entries from a meet in Spokane, Washington last weekend. Um, this is the same meet that Kim was testing. Uh, and picking up from where she left off, RunMeet does work best when entries are done on athletic.net as you get access to all those entry management tools. Uh, but it's also possible to import from other systems as well. And right now, uh, we've got this meet. We've got our entries in the meet. Let's go ahead and get RunMeet started. RunMeet launched in 2021 and has been used for over 11,000 high school track and field and cross country meets, including over 6,000 last year. Um, so it is only three years old, but it's had a lot of practice. Um, the overarching goal of RunMeet was to make it so that a middle school coach or a high school coach, I've got a meet today, I don't know what I'm doing, how do I do it? And you press a couple buttons and everything's set up and you can run the meet. And this scenario has happened quite a few times. <laughs> um, and right now, run meet is uh, just getting ready. It takes a minute or two, depending on how many entries are in the meet. And there were quite a few in this one. Um, so uh, once it is done, it is going to sh uh, start showing us some settings for the meet. So if you're familiar with high tech or meet pro, um, there's a lot of settings to make sure that everything shows up right. So this is similar. So uh, how many lanes are on our track or is there different lanes for oval and straightaway? I won't touch on all these, but um, there's a lot of stuff in here and there's a lot of stuff we will continue to add as we see different use cases in different states and uh, between high school and college. Um, so this, these are our track settings. We've got our field settings. You can choose to add wind, uh, choose what the default flight sizes you want are. Um, you can choose what our scoring is. You can score the entire meet, score it by division, do double duels, uh, change the point scaling. Uh, all that's uh, up to you and available. We always recommend using competitor numbers because if you are using the athletic suite between athletic.net, RunMeet, Athletic Live, and Athletic Live's various apps, uh, that, competitor number, that competitor number gives us a unique ID around all those apps and allows us to link everything together properly. So I'll go ahead and turn it on for this meet. And we have some seating options as well, which I'll leave these be for the moment. And when I click done here, this is going to start initializing the meet and it's gonna seed the meat for me. So as soon as this finishes, the meat is seeded, and technically I could start running the meat right now if I wanted to, but we all know there's always more to do once you seed a meat. There's little things that need to be changed, um, and that's part of the beauty of how the, this works in the cloud is those things can be done easily. Sure. Okay, let's say you have done everything you just did, mm -hmm. and you hit done, and you go, oh crap, mm -hmm. I made a mistake. Yes. How easy is it to, like where would you hit? So it depends on the mistake. Uh, and if the okay. mistake is totally awful and you want to start from scratch, and in fact, this is why I walked over there earlier is because I thought that this was still enabled. So I pulled it up on my phone and hit this button right here, which is turn off and reset run meet. So if I did that, it goes right back to scratch and we can start over again. And in terms of mistakes, I'm actually going to touch on uh, just some of the cool features, some of the features that make this sparkle. And you can see how some of those mistakes can be fixed relatively quickly. So right now we are in RunMeet and it is started. Uh, just go over kind of how we navigate. So right now we're on the seating tab and we're seeing track events. Uh, I could change this to field events. I could change to the results tab. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And let's say we have a number of different sessions or divisions, or I want to only look for the 3000 meter. Um, I could change those things by filtering at the top right here. And one of the really nice things about this is um, there's no local network for this. So if you want to have three people on a computer or three people working on this at once, I could have one person in that corner, one person over here, and one person back in Maryland where I live, all working on the meet at the exact same time. Uh, you could also have someone down at the finish line with an iPad and they're putting people in each heat or they're clerking down there. Um, all that's happening. So as they make changes, that's happening in the cloud, it's getting uploaded, and it's updating your start lists that go into your uh, FAT system if you use one. Is there, is there like a, a local cache system in case like I'm disconnected for some reason? I can go ahead and then as soon as I connect again, everything gets, gets 
you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah excellent question. So um, there is a app called Run Meet Local, and that lives on your computer. It can be on your Finish Links computer, or it can be on a different computer. Um, but ultimately, it's downloading the files that Finish Links would need, or your FAT system would need to load startless and keep running the meet. That is a text file on the computer. So if your internet goes out, you can continue to time the meet using what's in that text file. But if you have to change something, that's not gonna work until you get the internet back. Right. Yes. Right. It's just, it's keeping local what I'm doing, and then once I reconnect. You could then get back into this page and say, I wanna move somebody around. So, and I think maybe what you're getting at is th there's not a complete local copy of Run Meet at this moment. So it's not like, right. it's just kind yeah. Of, it's kind of instead of like every time I do it, it sends it. Yes. I'm doing it, it's kind of holding it. It's yes. like, oh, okay, I'm connected again. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Yes. But it's not. It's not a case where internet goes away and all of a sudden everything's gone. Yeah. You can, you know, keep running those hundreds while we figure out how to well, get this uh, change hotspots. Like you said, it's, it could be just one person in one local. Like right. If you have two people. It could just be this person who's out. Right. This person's fine. Mm -hmm. This person's out for like five minutes. Yes. And all of a sudden they're back and now they can catch up and now we're we're both on the cloud. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Um, so if you're checking in, uh, say at the starting line, and you lose the internet for your iPad, mm -hmm. you can still have, like, so what you're doing there, would you continue, would you have to wait for the internet to come on? In that case, you would need to wait for the internet to come on. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it is a good idea to have backup hotspots with this if you're... Yeah, because if you did that, and then the, the race ran... Right. The results wouldn't come up because it was never checked in. If you were relying, exactly. If you're relying on your guy to set up the heat that, and that's not online, that is a problem. Right. Okay. And now, but if it was, if it was something that didn't need to be to the cloud instantaneously, right. then you'd be okay. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't need to really have this uploaded for another five minutes. Right. I'll have connection in three minutes before the race starts, mm -hmm. and then I'm okay. Yep. Okay. You got it. Exactly. Um, and this, I, I mentioned this, but it does work on a phone or a tablet. So you can be on your phone, a tablet, a laptop, a big screen, works on all of that. And let's take a look at just a few of the features that I really like about this. Um, I'm not gonna go into the whole spectrum of meat management, um, but just some of the neat things that are available. So uh, when you're setting your advancement, uh, you can type in, let's say top one plus the next best two, and it's gonna let you know right there that 10 athletes advance to finals and there's two heats. So limits those issues of accidentally setting advancement up in an incorrect way. I'll just leave that as top one plus next best zero times. And uh, so when we set up run meet, there were a number of settings that were meet wide. Uh, let's say for the 60 meter hurdles, I wanna change some of those settings. I click on that three dot button, click on settings. And let's say I've only got uh, enough hurdles for seven lanes. So I'm gonna change it to just seat athletes in lanes two through eight. Click close and reseed, and that little eight is gonna to change to a nine. And if I click on the event, I'm gonna see that I have one through nine heats. I could look at those individually, or I could click all and see all of those events at once. Um, let's say that uh, one mistake I made, or maybe it's not a mistake, but a coach comes up and says, oh, I forgot to put an athlete in and you're feeling generous that day. Uh, you can take their name or number and click on the plus button right here. Start typing that in and you're gonna get the opportunity to click on that person and put them in that race. So now they are in heat two, lane one with no seed time. Uh, if you're feeling really, really, really generous, you could add a seed time in here. And then if you wanted to, you could reseed the meet or you could reseed this event. And because it's in the cloud, you're not worried about, and, and, and if your clerk is in the cloud too, then you're not worried about all oh, those heat sheets I printed 10 minutes ago are now void. They're getting everything updated that you have. So, so hypothetically in a situation like this, your clerk's got an iPad. Yes. And they're, so if you. If you want to do this level of uh, like moving well, things on the fly, like, yeah. Like we coach in the same city mm -hmm. and you know, we have that situation already printed heat sheets and so then we have to say you know I have to write something to walk over there right. and talk to him like he could just text us and say or text our clerk and mm -hmm. say hey 
just want to let you know I added someone to heat eight. Yep. And the clerk would just look and say, oh, there they are. Yep, exactly. So, okay. Yep, yep. So sure. We also do little kid meets with coaches who, you know, it's a dad doesn't know the name of 90% of the kids when they enter them. Mm -hmm. And they're coming up literally with a bunch of those kids. So we don't bother seeding. Mm -hmm. So we'll have like maybe a performance list, but half of them might not even run. Mm -hmm. So I could still have all that, but then I could create heats by saying it's number 135, 217, et cetera. Yeah, so like if you- At the check-in. Yes, so if you wanted to, uh, I'm gonna click this button and I'm 99% sure what it does. Let's see, if I click reset here, right, so th now this is unseated. So oh, what okay. you could do is then add a heat and I go here and I say, all right, yeah, I wanna have number 140 here, awesome. And in this case, this does have entries, but you could do it if there weren't entries also. Yeah. Um, so that's why it was showing me a, a list of people because those people are already in this particular Even event. Even not in, as long as you have their number, you're Right, good. So exactly. They, so they're, so they're, Right. Because the systems are synced up. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and head down to the women's one mile. So uh, we, we looked at adding athletes. I'm just going to go ahead and add uh, one more here as well. Uh, and just an example, if you try to add someone who's already in the event, let you know that this person's in heat one. Do I want to move them over? Yes, I do. It warns me about that. And uh, let's just add somebody that is actually not in this race at her. And you can add that seed time once, uh, once again if you want to. Um, another thing I really like about being able to manage how this works is uh, there's two different ways to drag and drop. So right now, look at some settings work. Currently at swap. So I think both of these, it's, it's, you don't need it often, but when you need it, you need both of these. So we're just gonna swap right now. So I wanna move, I wanna switch lane one and lane eight. I drag lane one down to eight and it's switched my athletes for me. Now let's say I wanna sort and I just wanna go ahead and move lane two to lane three and I wanna move lane one down to lane 18. It's moved everyone else up. Um, so just a couple of different ways to make that happen. And uh, one other really neat thing in here is, so if we go to settings, these are all the settings that we set at the start of the meet. Um, we can change those if we need to. So one I wanna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and enable breakpoints for waterfall, because let's say in that one mile, I wanna get the, fat, the, the top eight kids, and I wanna I want be able to sort the, or, uh, split the rest up evenly. I can uh, click on either settings, or I can click on this reseed event button, and I can say I want my top eight, and then I've got 23 athletes left. Let's see, how can we make that as even as possible? And now we've got eight, 12, and 11. Sounds good. And click on save. Uh, it's possible to enter results in as well. Um, so if you're hand timing a meet, meet for any reason, you can enter those times in. Um, but I think that happens a lot more with field if you're not using any kind of field results system. Uh, so let's take a look at that side of things. If I click on field, it's gonna give me all of my field events and I can click on the event, click on field series, and I can take the paper I get from the official, start typing in 5.67, uh, verifies that I'm typing in 5.67 meters. Uh, I can do a few others as well. And then as I'm doing that on the right hand side, it is updating the best mark for me. And I can run through my entire list, hit done, and the mark is put into the system right here. Uh, and that field series is being sent out via results or over to Athletic Live or wherever you're sending results. Another question. Sure. So it's say set up for meters, but mm -hmm. you told the person who set it up feet and inches. Yeah. If the kid, that's usually who clerks are like long jump, um, starts typing in 12 feet, two inches, will it record or say it's gonna be 12 feet, two inches? Or does it say you've got some, you know, I guess I can yeah. watch. Yeah, well, so I do that and you're gonna get a red uh, icon right there that that's not correct and nothing's okay. gonna happen. So it tells you that it's- There's something wrong meters. here, right, okay. yes. Um, I, I, it looks like, I don't, if I hit done here, it's not gonna tell me that, it's just, it's, oh, so I hit done and that mark got erased. So hopefully you're seeing enough red. That's a good point. Yeah. That could be something where, hey, this looks like an English mark. Yes. You have some work to do here. <laughs> I just got to reset it. 
And you know, you could also just change this one particular event and uh, I thought you could, uh, actually that might be something we need to add is being able to do metric in English for certain events. So I'll make a note of that. It is also possible to print. So if you have to print for any reason, maybe you, you, don't, you don't want to do that clerking on the fly. You want to have your finish line sheets or performance lists. Um, Rummeet has all that printing available. Um, we're constantly trying to add new things to those reports because um, there's, there's lots of use cases that we've, we've got and there's lots of key use cases we need to get to. If I, if I missed this, I'm sorry, but no, if, no so if, if we've got someone, a you know, kid, for example, that's running the log mm -hmm. um, so they can have this on the tablet and they're recording the results, right? Is that, is that correct? That is one way to do it, one but do it? those results are not going into any kind of live feed. Okay. So that's, it is one way to do it. That's, yep. So there's no, there's no live, like... There's a way to do it live, it's just through a different app. Which I'll get to in okay. a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, cool. but yeah, you you are right. About like, hey, do I have to go into the entire system and have that access to record the long term? It sounds like we're going to get that. Answer. Yes. Cool. Yep. You got it. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, thank you for transitioning us into Athletic Live. So uh, we've talked about the the first two parts of this Athletic Suite, which are Athletic Net and registration, Run Meet, Meet Management, and then if you have a Run Meet Meet and you'd like to create an Athletic Live Meet, you can click that button and then click this green button to click your Athletic Live Meet, um, which I won't do right now, but it is a good transition just into Athletic Live and some of the features that are available. So Athletic Live is the third part of the Athletic Suite, and it's for everything that's happening on your Meet day and what gets shown to folks and how you're making as much of the data that's, that's available in the, in the Meet available to people in a nice way. Uh, it consists of four different apps, one is Athletic Live, which is our real-time results. Uh, Athletic Field, which is an iOS and Android app that allows for field results entry. Athletic SB, which is our quick and easy way to create scoreboards and have them show up on in-stadium displays. And Athletic Awards, which is our awards management app. And I'll go ahead and start that slideshow here. So I just want to touch on a few of the uh, more, well, they may be more advanced features of Athletic Live they're actually available to anybody in most cases. And it's not really anything extra you have to do. It's just this is available should you want to use it. Uh, one of them is real-time rankings. So uh, for all colleges and for all states that leverage athletic.net for their uh, state advancement uh, uh, series, which means that all the marks for the, the state are in there, then we can show real-time rankings on the live track and field results. We don't do it for states that aren't because those rankings are going to be very wrong. Um, so in this case, uh, this is, uh, both of these are example of uh, college meets that happened last weekend. Um, we know that this particular school right here is in NCAA D1, and we know that 1198 is equal to number 30 in D1. If you scan that QR code, it's actually going to bring you to that women's triple jump so you can see what that looks like um, on your phone. And on the right-hand side here um, is a 800 meter, it's the same concept. This person's using finish links to do splits. And once they hit that final time, it's looking to see uh, that this person, uh, what's that? We know that this team is D2. It's a D2 number 24. And we also know because we have all the stats in the system that it is a personal record. In this case, it's a season best. So we're trying to leverage that athletic.net database, take all those performance lists, and make that appear on the live scoreboard so folks know what's happening in any given moment. And that's, is, am, I, am I hearing correctly, like, if so, if we're running, you know, obviously there's a million high school meets on, mm -hmm. on a Saturday. Yeah. So, um, you know, if that's a high school and mm -hmm. it's number 10 in the 800. Yeah. And by the end of the meet, someone else in New York ran faster, that's going to switch over to number 11. Is that, is that true? No. Oh, it will on the athletic net side, but on the athletic live results, it's what's happened right now. Okay. So, and there are, there are two cases. So there's live. So at live, this could say D1 number 30. But when the final results get uploaded, that could be an hour later, they might be number 35. Okay. But the concept is that I think this is really mainly for that, all right, I'm looking at this right now, or for an announcer. An announcer wants to be able to say that at this moment, it's number 30. That might not be the case in 10 minutes, but when he said it, it's true. So it's just trying to let you know what's oh, yeah, available. Yeah, no, yeah. I just heard from one of my, my college buddies that yeah. was in uh, the other night, and he was like, yeah, it's updated in real time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah. pretty cool. 
And I, it's a good question. It might be something we think about. But also, I think there's value in Athletic Live being something that's seen on the meet day. Yeah. Athletic Net is what you want to see for your final results because that's got your performance list, your rankings. It's got right. a lot more data that's, that applies at, some, at other places than just this particular meet. Yeah. yeah. And it would, I guess it would be a little confusing if you announced it as U.S. number 10 and then later on, Kid same kid runs the 200 and be like, yeah, he ran the 100 and was well, actually US number 12. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, Sometimes there's too much data. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then somebody's like, hey, my kid was number 10. Right. He's number 12. He got the results wrong. But it's still cool that you could do it, right? And everything's centralized and in the cloud, yeah. so it's happening in real time. Mm -hmm. I mean, the concept of the integration of it yeah. is, is pretty nice. And I should mention, too, that even, Athletic Net has very robust U.S. top 100 lists for high school. So even if your state's not uh, necessarily an athletic.net state, um, it, it's still possible to show those top U.S. rankings. So even if, say, we're not Illinois, mm -hmm. we can still get a ranking out of it, though, for our state? It's possible to do national and state. Okay. Um, but we only allow states that we know we have good okay, ranking so lists for. The state that we wouldn't do because we're not. Correct. Uh, okay. Yes. Yep. The national we could. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Athletic Field. So this is our iOS and Android uh, field results management app. Uh, it also works on Windows and web app, um, but iOS and Android is a little more fully featured. Uh, it works with total stations and jump lasers and has the ability to do more things externally. If you take a, uh, a video of that, or take a picture of that QR code, it's gonna bring you to an introductory video that's about five minutes long. That just shows you how it works. Uh, the real nice thing about this is it works online. Uh, so you get six kids that aren't doing anything. You give them, you tell them to take their phone out, type a six, or six digit or six letter code in, and they've got the event. They can go shadow the official, type the marks in, and then because that phone's on the internet, all the results are showing up in real time. Uh, there are a number of officials that use this as their primary entry, uh, field entry system as well, um, but it is a little more common to just, you know, we've got some volunteers here, let's go allow them uh, to type this in. It does work over a local network too, if uh, you have that in place at, say, an indoor facility. And not, th not that we would need it here, because it's probably usually phones, but um, if the same local caching type thing, if like, cause I know we've got some tablets that we use for, for example, for um, our admissions. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to have a hotspot because the tablets are not web enabled. So if we were to do that with this, would we st do we still have that local caching? Hey, I'm entering all the bars. Mm -hmm. They're not showing up online because I lost my internet connection. But once I get my connection back, it'll Upload. Yep, so, and this, this will work completely off the internet. So all you need is internet at the start to pull the marks down, internet at the end to send them up. Cool. And if it goes in and out in between, it's okay. Um, it, it was built like that because uh, if you're gonna trust this, you can't have it dying midway, <laughs> midway through the event. And our, one of our timers, our main timer, did this, uh, I don't know if he's trying it anymore, but I, I don't know what the system was. But you had to have, there was a lot of setup involved. Mm -hmm. And so you couldn't just like say, hey, Tommy, pull your phone up, go to this URL, yeah. and type this code in. There was a whole, so, mm -hmm. so that kind of, we had to have our own devices here, and it was a whole, yeah. a whole production. So this it's way Should easier. be a lot simpler, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a couple of years ago. Right, yeah. yes. Um, next uh, athletic life feature I want to talk about is race videos. So leveraging the field app. Uh, it can take your start list from your FAT system, and someone can be on a device, an iPad or a phone, and they can be recording an event, hit save, and because we have that start list, we know that it's the men's 800 heat one. That's getting uploaded to Athletic Live, and then uh, if you were to scan this QR code, it brings you to this men's 800 that I'm screenshotting here, and you can see what that looks like. Uh, you, you're able to see each heat, and if you click on a result, uh, it's going to show you that person and then whatever videos they have. Uh, if they've got multiple events, you'll be able to click on each event and see the video that they have for that event. Uh, and if uh, the timer is taking finish line images from their FAT system, those can come in here as well. So this can be someone's, we put someone on top of the uh, press, press box. box. Exactly. And they're literally just recording and just uploading. Yep, exactly. Yep. And then it's appearing in the live results. 
Field videos, similar concept. So if someone is using athletic field, uh, it's possible while they are waiting for the person to make their throw, they can be taking the video, and then they take the video of that throw or that jump, uh, and they stop the video, enter the mark, hit save, that video is gonna get uploaded to Athletic Live and they'll be able to see it in the, within the live scoreboard within a minute or two. Uh, if you scan that QR code, it is gonna bring you to uh, this gentleman's shot put right here and you're able to click on each attempt. Uh, same with the pole bolt over here. You can click on each attempt and it's gonna show you the appropriate video. Um, so this is something, as long as the phone's on the internet, these videos tend to be fairly small because they're four or five seconds long. Um, so really within a minute or two, that video is gonna get uploaded and viewable within the live scoreboard. Athletic SB is our physical display board software. Um, so it's really easy. If you have a board of any size, you can use Athletic SB to create a board at that size, change some colors, and it'll work. Uh, all these boards work both online and locally. So there's no extra uh, local network setup that you have to do. If the data is being sent to Athletic Live, then it's gonna be able to appear on one of these boards. Um, this is not something where you have to open something up and create these layouts yourself. They're kind of pre-created and all you're doing is customizing font sizes, how many lines you want, depending on how big the scoreboard is, um, and any colors. So this Live Track Standings board is an example that can just be data that's coming out of finish links. Um, so whatever's in finish links could be showing up here. And a compiled standings board is another example. Uh, say you're on heat five of 10 of the 100 meter dash and you select that you want the boys 100 meter dash to appear on this board. Um, then it's gonna show the standings at that moment and then auto update as heat five, six, seven, and so on and so forth come in. And the last app within our suite is the awards app. So as final results get uploaded to Athletic Live, uh, there's a link that you can give to your awards official. They'll be able to click on this link, or they'll be able to click on the women's 5,000 meter run, and then they'll be able to see the list of people that have received awards. And you can configure how many awards that is. Um, if you're running a meet where folks can come up and get the award themselves, uh, they can walk up and say, I'm so-and-so, awards official gives them their award and clicks on this. Uh, and if you scan this QR code, it brings you to this exact uh, event, then you feel free to click around and play around and see how that works. And this does work by event or by team. So if your meet is allowing someone at the end of the meet to, you know, they, they, they come up and say, I'm, I'm coach of so-and-so, can I have all my awards? Uh, they can go to the team page and see all 30 awards they need to give that person, grab them, knock them off, and yeah. good to go. They, they could literally do the meet, like, gosh, I wish we could have this, is you could be on the PA and say, you know, hey, Assumption High School, you guys still have yeah. some awards you need to pick up. Absolutely. Right? That's because what that is right there. Is... Coach saw his kids picked them all up, but yeah. two girls didn't. So mm -hmm. he would say probably, what, it would say like 28 out of 30. Yep, so exactly. He knows, he knows the two mm -hmm. the Exactly, yep, yep. Just, just trying to make it easy to yeah, get everybody to come get their awards. Uh, we do have enterprise sites. Um, this is a great option for any timing companies or schools uh, who do their own timing. Um, and it allows you to show all of your results at a URL of your choice with your logo and colors on every page. So two examples here of some universities that do a lot of their own timing, Bucknell in Pennsylvania and CNU in Virginia. Um, we've created enterprise sites for them. So their logo is always appearing, their colors are always appearing, um, and it looks more like their site. And we have an anet.live domain that you can use and you pick any subdomain you want. And when people go to that site, they're only gonna see your meets. They're not gonna see everybody else's meet. And we've come to the end of our presentation. So uh, I'd love to take any questions that you have or uh, we also have, as Kim mentioned, a, a robust support email at support at athletic.net. And if you think of something after the fact, uh, email us and we'd be happy to answer any questions. So I have a question on um, one type of meet that we run is uh, it's distance events only. Mm -hmm. It's normally talking three events. And what we'll tell them is we have a main race, say in the 1600, that will be the varsity race. Everyone else is going to be competing in an open race. So the first year I did it, I said let's have a separate, let's set up events and divisions and people would enter directly in but then I have people who couldn't figure it out, so they're putting kids that can make the fast heat into the open mm -hmm. race, 
So what I did was to switch it to just, you're entering the 1600, we'll create mm -hmm. the, the heat. So I can create heats, but is it possible to have, say, heats two, three, four, and five, the slower heats, called the open heat, and the first heat is called the varsity heat? Or, not that it's a big deal, but just out of curiosity. So here's what we recommend for that scenario when you've got uh, say 1600 and you want everybody to enter and then after the fact you can choose how to split that up. Um, so right now we've got one division in this meet. Uh, it's the collegiate open division. But let's say I wanted to have a, well, yeah, actually there's a couple here, so collegiate qualifying and collegiate invitational. So um, if I had a collegiate invitational, let's just do this here uh, at event. Let's do this for the 300 meters. And if so we have a collegiate invitational 300 meters, if I go back to this entries page and I find my 300 meters, uh, what I can do is I can say, well, I can click on these right here. So say I wanna take my top eight and move them to the collegiate invitational. Simply check those, hit move entries, and change them over to the collegiate invitational. So this is part of that entry management process you can do when entries are done in athletic. So you don't have to worry about yeah trying to do that. Yeah, it takes a while. And then that's before you see. Right. So it's just you know you know that yeah it's that, that scenario. Any other questions? Well, thank you all very much for your time. I appreciate you joining us towards the end of the convention here, and I hope you have a safe trip home. Thanks. Thank you, thank thank you, you very much. much. Thank you, thank you. We had some great questions. Yeah, lots of good questions. <laughs>